leg warmers for the arms, so um, arm warmers. Hi everyone and welcome to my parents' living room and uh, <laughs> this beautiful treasure trove of 100-year-old craftsmanship that I was about to show you right now. I was asking you the other day if you would be interested in uh, me showing you a few of the traditional garments that we wore here in northern Germany as opposed to the typical Dirndl and Lederhosen style that you might be familiar with. And um, we have, as you can see, quite a, um, a, tr a bit of a treasure here um, of the traditional garments that we would be wearing here in our district or that we would have been wearing here in our district. And by district, I mean like the surroundings of like 50, 60 kilometers. So this is really a tiny thing, um, a very regional thing, and you would find uh, different, very different styles of traditional garments um, in very close pro proximity to each other because we were really very in kind of special and, and intricate and very individual in our garments um, back in the days. And um, you can see that uh, we have a, a mixture of dolls with the traditional garments here. These are specifically made for these dolls. And these are not like children's sized garments, but they are specifically made for that because when it fell out of fashion wearing traditional garments, um, like around after World War II and around the 50s, um, it would still be fashionable to kind of show off the craftsmanship, craftsmanship of um, your ancestors and what maybe your grandmother or great-grandmother did back in the days and that you would still be wanting to show this. And so um, you would have the aprons and the jackets and stuff cut up and made into smaller versions for these dolls so that they can they can wear them and that you can show to other people to you know, your, like your grandkids and kids, um, what it was all about. But we also have some full-sized uh, pieces here, like these aprons and uh, shoulder scarves that I will be taking out later and show you in more detail. And so I just wanted to give you a quick uh, overview or look at these dolls. This, for example, is a traditional wedding dress up with the wedding crown that would have been worn by the bride. Uh, you can see that there are mirrors here on, on these tassels coming down here. And this is something that we see in, in many cultures that they have like eyes or mirrors on their garments to repel, you know, the evil spirits and the evil look that you would, um, yeah, that you don't want to have on like the evil spirits that you don't want to have on your wedding days. So this is the traditional wedding gown. I'm actually thinking about taking this all apart and showing you piece by piece how you would put on the traditional garments and um, what they are made of and what the pieces represent and how they would be worn. One thing that you can also keep in mind is the difference between the Dirndl tradition and this kind of traditional garment is the Dirndl is still fashionable today. You can still wear it today to go to the opera, to go to festive, you know, special types of events, weddings, stuff. You can get married in, well, of course you can get married, you can get married in, in Dirndl. So it's really a fashion statement that you would, during the day, uh, on your normal day-to-day -day, uh, uh, basis, you would wear like jeans, t-shirts, whatever, the normal garments, but you would wear um, the dirndl for, festiv for festivities and for the Oktoberfest. But uh, with these type of garments, this is something that you would will be that you would be brought up with, that you would either wear or not. If you choose to forego this kind of tradition and if you choose to not wear the red skirts, then you would not, you know, on a special day, on Sundays or whatever, go back to these garments and put them on again for special occasions. So this is really a lifestyle choice. And I remember when I was growing up here in this village that has got like 300, 400 people living here. Um, when I grew up, I still 
um, very aware of people or women wearing these red skirts on a daily basis and they would also wear this traditional type of hair every day. The, these old women in their 80s and 90s, they still had very long hair that they would drape up in this type of top knot that I will show you um, closer up later. Um, this is really a lifestyle choice. You would either wear this garment or you don't. And you would not just put it on for, for Sundays or for special occasions. So this is kind of, this is might also be why it's fallen out of fashion to, to wear it here in Northern Germany. Um, there are still, you know, kind of organizations who do the traditional dances and who really care for those, uh, for those garments and who meet up on a regular basis and educate and show, um, show these garments off, but they wouldn't be wearing them you know, on the regular or even to festivities. And that's the difference between um, these type of garments here in northern part, in the northern part of Germany, and um, let's say Bavaria. And let's be honest, Bavaria is only a tiny piece of Germany. It's only a small part. Please keep in mind, Germany is as big as the state of Texas in the US. So just to give you a sense of scale. But now let's go and undress the pub, let's undress the dolls. <laughs> Meet my girl, Engel. Um, as, I, as I said the other day in my previous video, um, the Modern Folk Embroidery Cell right now, uh, the, the thing that we are stitching is by a girl called Engeltje, which is the Dutch expression for Engel which is German, and for angel, which is English. And the other day I told you that when I was a child and I wa when I was at the, uh, at the cemetery with my grandma and I was just roaming ar around and I saw all the tombstones everywhere, I really thought that the first name Engel and the first name Heinrich were the only two words or two, the only two names that we would be able to have here in our village because every second tombstone had the word Engel on here, and that's why I call my little doll here Engel, because this is really a typical name uh, here in our village. Um, I took off her wedding crown for now, um, because I want to show you uh, all the different layers more intricately, but she had a bad hair day underneath. I mean, I guess she wouldn't have taken this crown off for like 40 years, so I just put a decency cap on this. And this is actually a thing that women would wear during during the day, you know, working in the fields, doing going about their days, they would kind of they would still have this updo, but they would cover the rest of their head with this type of knit cloth piece of cap. Okay, so um, let me show you all the different layers of this garment. Of course, this is a full on festive day sunday let's go to uh let's go to the church and show off our goods um type of type of wear but um that's why it is so good to start so with the this. first thing that you would put on would be a white linen shirt you know very long linen shirt that you can wash um very hot and that you can actually get clean because most of the other materials would not be able to be washed and then you would start with let me show here with the jacket which has a medium arm or medium long arm with um, embroidery already on the sleeves so these would be the two things that you would put on this type of a jacket which is also like a woolen thing it's lined on, in, in, on the inside with linen, and then you would put this vest on top of it. And already you can see that the vest and the, the jacket, which is called the camisole and Bostock, Bostock? Bostock, yes, <laughs> already uh, set the tone for today's color theme. Because here you can see the dark blue and the blue in the shirt and um, the dark blue embroidery all around. And uh, that this would mean that you would also have to wear the red skirt with the blue on the bottom and the blue apron. 
and I'll show you that in a second. But you can also see the very intricate um, embroidery that is done here on this velvety type of uh, um, material. And this velvety material would also be uh, used for the men's vests. They would have um, not really, it's not really important that when your women wears this type of embroidery on their vest that you would have the same thing on your vest. But this type of uh, embroidery with the stars, with those with those flowers. Um, so this is another color scheme, as you can see. It's more in the red, orange, uh, and green family. And this is actually uh, the one that I'm most familiar with, with that what uh, our village mostly wore. And as you can see, all the flowers are hand embroidered on this velvet. These parts here would have been woven, but then also hand stitched in place, which you can see. Let me open up this, this here and this here. And you can see the hand stitched part on the inside. And I was asking her, um, my friend, if there are some kind of <clears throat> sampler, samplers that we would be familiar with from the cross stitch um, things that we do. And she said, well, I'm not really sure if there are samplers for these because these are not really cross stitch things. These are more embroidery type uh, uh, flowers. So you don't really have to count it out to, uh, to match the exact thing but you would just, you know, eyeball it and, and, oh, she even ran out of, <laughs> she even ran out of white, uh, um, white floss for this top one here. And um, so, yeah, you wouldn't really have like a, a very set s set of, of, um, of flowers or of embroideries to do, but you would have to, you would have your own style. And you would probably not really do all the embroidering yourself for your own garment, because um, as I said, we are here in a rural type of, we're in a village, um, there would still be a lot of farm work and women would obviously want to dress up for a special occasion, but they, most of the time they would have to work. And so um, older women or women who are not strong enough to work in the fields, they would, you know, sit down and do most of the embroidery for, the women in in our village and so every girl kind of had her own style and um, you would be able to see uh, who made what from the style of, of flowers yeah. next thing that you would put on is the red skirts and that why that's why um, those women that were uh, wearing traditional garments here in our village were known as the red skirts it's always this, this color. It's always this color of red skirt. And it's thick and woolen. And you can have this piece here down here um, to show your individual color style or your individual color choice, what you would like to wear. So this would be the skirt. Um, simple fastening here with a simple snap and um, here is the color part. And you can actually, let me just have a look. Yeah, you would be able to, you know, carefully uh, um, rip this up and, and, and change the color scheme of your skirt, although you wouldn't be doing this on a regular basis. I suppose you would be, you know, kind of set with one or two color schemes that you would wear. Girls, and guess what? The skirts. This is a 100 year old skirt and it has pockets. <laughs> it has pockets. Now, Enge, what's next? So we have your undergarment. We have your undergarment. We have your red skirts and even the doll. Even the doll skirt has pockets. I love it. Oh, there is still. A, oh, I'm. I missed something. There is an underskirt as well. Sorry, an underskirt as well, and of course knit socks. But anyway, so the next thing, very important thing, the most important thing in my opinion, the apron. 
And as you can see, there is a strange seam line here because, as I just said in the beginning, um, those aprons from back in the days, they would have been cut, cut apart and sewn together for these dolls. But if you have a look here, come to this side, hang on If you look here, this is a full size apron. This is over a hundred years old. It's raw silk. All of those aprons are usually made of raw silk. And the floss is also silk floss from France. And as you can see, um, there is the window and we have a lot of sun. And this has been here for over 50 years. The skirt is over 100 or 120 years old. The colors are still screaming bright. Look at this beauty. I'm, I'm always gag when I look at this beautiful embroidery. Shall we have a look at the back? That's what it looked like. And it was raw. It was like that. It was not kind of lined or anything. It would just be like that. I guess there would be something like type of a glue on the other on the other side because it's kind of crackling. I'm not sure, but it would be it would be raw like this. Next one, a very important thing of this garments are these tiny little, let me just have a look what Sturp means. So the jacket would end up somewhere around here and it has like this small lacy thing that would be, you know, flipped up like that. And these, these arm warmers, they would go from somewhere here to up here. Oh, let me see that. Yes, from, from here, from right over, over the wrist to up here, over, um, over the elbow. And these are true works of art. They are knit. And my friend told me that you would kind of string all the different pearls onto the thread, and then you would just start knitting. I have no idea how this actually works. Um, these are glass beads and some brass beads thrown in there too. And then you would just start knitting with five, um, um, you know, five needles. That's what the word I was looking for. And until it was finished. And these are also, of course, you know, in the color scheme of the jacket, of the vest, of the skirt, of the apron. Yes, this is the one that goes with this apron. She's, I'm, I'm these are, again, over a hundred years old. Just the next thing that you would put on would be um, just a shoulder scarf, like the shawls, this uh, uh, triangle shawls that you uh, now can, can knit. And it's not really, visible on angle here. Let me see if I can pull this up. <laughs> yeah, so this would just go around the shoulders. So this is the shoulder piece. This really, you know, it's ruffled up like it's ruffled up here. It really goes around the neck like so and would lay over over your shoulders like this. Um, just as a decorative part and also, you know, depending on the season as um, for warmth. Again, over 100, this must be like 120 years old, hand embroidered, beautiful silk, again, raw edges on the inside, but this was lined with some type of I don't know, cotton, cotton cloth. Yeah, well worn and teased, but you can see, and it makes for a wonderful decorative piece if you put it together like this. Okay, I did take the shoulder piece out from under here. It's very, very delicate. Um, the cloth already is a bit of full of holes, but what I love about First of all, of course, the color. It's a very warm, colory, um, yeah, corally red. 
and the beads that are woven in or that are embroidered in are little tiny brass pieces and um just look at the vivid colors of yeah look at these intricate tiny little flowers so this would be the um i guess so yes it's the same color scheme so this would be the shoulder piece that goes with that apron up there Angela, there's still things that we have to put on you yes we have the apron the things oh yeah okay now when we go out and when it's really a special day and then we let me just check my double check my things yes when we want to go out and it's a special day we have our apron our shoulder piece our vest our you know gloves everything and then we would put on these beautiful tiny um slips as we call them so they are kind of you know like ties like bow ties and this huge ruffle around the neck yeah this one is a bit i mean this is a bit dirty so you see these huge huge ruffles and then this tie that would weigh the top part of the ruffle down so that you would actually be able to breathe and see something let me show you like this this is also very 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 old with uh, silk fastenings, beaded. Um, I guess they would have like a piece of cardboard that they would strip this on and then baste it on. Beautifully intricate, isn't it? And all, again, brass, 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 brass. And uh, why is there just this one single thing? Is it, oh, oh my God, yes, this is the better one. Um, these beads, these are glass beads, um, they probably have been coated with gold. We are not sure about that, but it looks like it. So if you wear the ruffles and the tie, you would also have, well, this is also for very, very special occasions and for weddings, these type of choker necklaces uh, here on, on, on top. And it has amber beads going around the neck. Hello, amber. Uh, amber beads going around the neck and this this is really something um this piece of or this kind of necklace would of course be very top heavy like very front heavy and it would weigh down and so you would let me just turn you around little girl so this would be held down with this piece so this would be this would snap onto the um the cord of the necklace just with a simple snap and it would hang down like this and again you see the same color scheme and you have again the very intricate beading that resembles or that matches the tie here in the front oh i also have one of those in full size let me let me show so this is the full size um, bow. Yeah, it looks it looks like it looks a bit like a bow. Hello, this is Sophie. This is uh, Engel's sister, younger sister, of course. Engel gets married, and she's her younger sister, and um, on her we can see the very traditional head. Uh, uh, hair updo so you would you know pull all your all your hair to the front without the spider web sorry pull all your hair to the front and then have like a filler piece put underneath and then you would either braid your hair or just wrap it around very neatly so that it's really a sheen uh, uh, a very smooth um piece of hair up there then you put it in a hairnet over and then you would have either these these hair caps on a normal day or um you would have as i said the the black silk ribbon cap and to fasten that silk ribbon cap 
you can then of course have like bobby pins and stuff obviously they didn't have bobby pins back then what were they called well anyway um and you know pin it to this kind of hairdo and this was really something that all of the women even it, until their old old age would wear here in the village but they would wear this every day they would not not get out of the house without having their hair done like that and as an exercise piece or a decorative piece oh this is also seen some better days um or maybe a, even a pin cushion it probably would have wouldn't have been uh um wouldn't have been used as a pin cushion but you would have these type of decorative cushions made uh, for it yourself to have them. Oh, there are there are pins in there. Okay. Um. So either in this, maybe this was the this was the type where where the children or the girls would practice their beading. I'm not sure. Linda said that it was just for decorative purposes these kind of cushions maybe this was also you know made for those women who would do the the, the embroidery for other people's so that uh, for other people so that they can show other people's so that they can show um would you rather you know that style or that style of beading but these are very beautiful pieces i found another uh, hymn book going through here this one is from 1893 when we are protestant here uh, or the the region here is protestant and when you are 13 or 14 years old no 14 15 years old you have the you, know, you have your confirmation the confirmation of your of your faith and um then you would get your own hymn book with these kind of embellishments or um, um, um. You would have your maiden name in here, um, indented here, and this is what it looks like on the inside. Again, 1893. No melodies, just words. Now, Engel, what's the last thing that we can put on you? Shall we put the, the wedding crown on you? Do you want to show them your wedding crown? Okay. Okay, at first we would put this. I don't know what it's called. First, we would put this piece on floor length silk embroidered kind of shawls with those mirrors to propel the evil look. And on top of that, the crown is something very special. Um, not every bride had their own crown because it was very, first of all, it's really heavy. Even this tiny one must be like a kilo or something or even more. Uh, they were very, very heavy. And um, they would really just sit on your uh, on the top of your head like this it's like a true crown you know there's nothing really to fasten or anything it would it was this this would sit on your on your head then you had this top here you know embroidered like this also tiny mirrors inside and this would actually travel from bride to bride throughout uh the village I know that my grandmother or my great grandmother had one made. She made it herself and then she lent it to those people who who got married so that they could wear their wedding crown on their special day. Engel, thank you for being my assistant today and showing the world how beautiful our wonderful traditional garment here in the northern part of, of Germany is. Mm -hmm.